Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I mean, it's a real pleasure to be here today to talk to you about uh, what's happening uh, around us in uh, South Africa, but also on the African uh, continent. And I would like to thank and congratulate the team, the local team, uh, Nitin Kamlish, Tasnim, who did an awesome initiative because this is something new that's happening around the world, but that's the first time we are having it here in Mauritius. So, I'm local, okay, I did my studies in Mauritius, all my studies from uh, primary until my PhD, and after that, okay, I moved to South Africa, where now I'm working with uh, a very big project, and I am a commissioning scientist. So today we're going to talk about, uh, rather the role of Mauritius in the age of African astronomy. So, to begin with, whenever you have any discussion, okay, with people, and then you mention Africa. And then, obviously, when we talk about Africa, the discussion goes into kind of like information that we already have or some knowledge okay, we have about Africa. So I ask myself, okay, if I start Googling, I just put on Google Africa, obviously the first thing that's come out is the map of Africa. And Africa is a continent. It's got lots of countries. But many people, okay, they consider Africa as a one country. I mean, it's so unfortunate that, you know, at times, okay, I have friends telling me, hey, you know, you're from Cape Town, and I have a friend in Africa. I was like, yeah. I was like, uh, do you know him? I said, like, maybe. Where does he come from? He's from, from Congo. I'm like, okay, wait, Congo is up there, and South Africa is here. So there's lots of information like that, that people, okay, just, just like associate Africa to one particular point. But then, when I did my research on Google about Africa, when I did my research about Africa, what comes out is poverty. I'm just putting the four things that Google gave me about Africa. Poverty, a big problem in Africa. We all know that. But we do have poverty in other countries around the world. The next one was safari. Okay, and then, yeah, yeah, we all love, okay, like safari. We would like to go to, to Africa to see lions, okay, all those animals, okay, in the wild and in action. You know, that's great. And then on top of that, when we talk about Africa, what comes to the mind is a big problem, HIV AIDS. So if you are not affected, somehow or the other, you, you are affected by HIV AIDS, or you know someone okay, who is also like infected with HIV AIDS. These are the things okay, which came out from Google. But then, that was surprising. The first one I got was this nice picture of hope. I mean, there are African continents, okay, you have lots of youngsters, new generation, believing and hoping for a better Africa. And that's like really amazing for me. So, Africa is not that bad, okay? There are lots of problems, but let's try to see on the other side of the coin. Okay, what do we have in Africa? I'm going to use astronomy, that's my field, because that's also a field which every one of us, being a scientist or not, you look at the star, you see the stars, you see the constellations, it's like, wow, it's amazing. You're in Africa, you're in India, you're in uh, Europe, you're in the US, you're amazed by what we have in our so, in South Africa, we have an optical observatory, and South Africa has established itself in astronomy since almost like 200 years ago. So, whenever we talk about astronomy also, the first thing that people think again is, oh, you see things. And then when I say, okay, I'm a radio astronomer, it's like, wait, do you see like the radio? I mean, it is very interesting because to me, the first telescope actually is the human eye. Okay, you're collecting the visible light and you process it in your brain, and then you're making an image. And this is how we see things. This is how we perceive things. But objects in the universe, they don't emit only in optical. They emit in different other frequencies, in what we call X-rays, gamma rays, infrared, and so on and so forth. So. We are doing astronomy in Africa since a long time back, but there's something new which is now happening. This is how the future will look like on the African continent. We are building the Square Kilometer Array. 
This is a big mega project. It is an international project with lots of other countries being part of a consortium. We are building radio telescope to look at the universe differently. So the project is driven by sciences like understanding magnetism. Some of you, okay, you played with a magnet when you were kids. They say like, wait, why is a magnet attracting and then okay, why is it pushing the other, uh, the other, on, on the other side? But you will be surprised that in the universe, we do have similar magnetic fields that we still don't understand where do they come from, but they are there. So the SKA will try to un, uh, explain and try to find uh, explanation basically of, for example, why the magnetic, uh, magnetic field, how galaxies are formed, how do they evolve, how do they grow, how do they interact. And on top of that, okay, we are trying to find molecules. Is there life out there in space? We detected lots of other molecules in space. I mean, the biggest pub, if you want to go to a pub, is not anywhere in, I mean, on us. The biggest pub is found in space. There's a huge cloud okay, of alcohol which has been detected. <laughs> How is alcohol being created up in space? And then we have, and what you've heard about, dark matter and dark energy. Everything we know about the universe is only 4%. 96% of the universe we still don't understand. We don't know. We have dark matter. We have dark energy. So the SKA is a 2 billion euro project which is coming on the African continent to try to answer some of these scientific questions. And in the meantime, in South Africa, we are building radio telescope. This is not Photoshop. This is a real telescope with which okay, I'm working. That's the first one of a telescope which we call the Meerkat. So South Africa is building the Meerkat, which will consist of 64 telescopes. They're all connected together. And then okay, we'll try to address the scientific uh, uh, questions okay, that we have. So the 64 telescope, should be ready. Right now we have only two, but by 2017, all these 64 telescopes should be up and running for astronomers, for scientists to use this instrument. And then this 64 telescope will move into 254 telescope. And that's going to be the biggest, the biggest in the world. And after that, the 254 is going to become up to 3,000 telescopes all around the world. I don't think, okay, maybe some of you still like trying to figure out the scale of this. This is not only the biggest project coming to Africa, this is the biggest project mankind is going to do for the next few decades. And on the African, I mean in South Africa, we also have one of the biggest optical telescope, 11 meter class optical telescope, which is up there and we scientists, we are using and we have here Rajin, okay, who is one of the students from Mauritius, who is doing his PhD using this amazing instrument. And uh, in Namibia, our neighbor, we have a gamma ray telescope. So the gamma ray telescope works differently, optical telescope works differently, and radio telescope works differently. And now Namibia has been pre-selected to be the country to host the biggest gamma ray telescope in the world. So right now, okay, we can have a feel that, okay, wait, every biggest single instrument for doing research, which is going to revolutionize science, is happening in Africa. What will be the role, or what is the role of Mauritius in all this? In Mauritius, some of you might know that we had a radio telescope, which is called the Mauritius Radio Telescope. It was built in 1992, run in until 2005, and uh, Dinesh is here, he was one of the pioneers who had been building and using this instrument. So when we build an instrument like that, we have till now produced six PhDs, pure produce from Mauritius, beneficiating the free education system, and now we are working in international facilities all around the world. You will tell me like, okay, wait, six PhDs, okay, this is nothing, okay, but six PhDs, okay, in astronomy, in a 1.4 million, but on top of that, we have been having students, undergraduate students in science and engineering from the University of Mauritius, 500 of them have gone through the process of learning and getting experience from this instrument. 
And now they're working in various fields, in telecommunication, in uh, the, some of them are teaching, some of them are doing other research, computers, and all these things. And in 2004, the effort that we did in Mauritius was culminated by an award which we received from NASA for promoting science and education and astronomy. I mean, I really like feel that little country like Mauritius, we did little astronomy, but then we got a big recognition. So we have resources in Mauritius. We have lots of resources. When the SKA will come up online, or even the Meerkat when it's coming up in 2017, we are going to produce exabyte of data. So right now you're used to gigabyte, okay? You have your modem, you have your Wi-Fi, you have megabyte. We are talking about exabyte of data in one day. So if you can take, for example, the whole history of mankind, you put that on tape, okay? That would be equivalent of the amount of data we are going to collect per day from this instrument. That's why we need resources, we need computational powers, and Bruce is going to talk afterwards about the rise of the machine. Where does that come uh, and fit into this? So, as I said, Mauritius, we don't have funding. Everywhere you go, we have the issue, okay, we don't have money, okay? But we have a very important resource, which is human power. We have a very good education system. You can criticize, we can discuss about it, but still, we are producing very good students and researchers. And that's why we started an initiative in uh, 2011 in Mauritius. The initiative is called the JEDI, which is a joint exchange development initiative, which started, okay, Bruce uh, is the initiator of this project. And in 2011, we bring the JEDI to Mauritius. So whenever we do teaching, whenever you go to talks and lectures, okay, you listen to someone, you see like great research, but nobody tells you exactly, okay, how did I do? What was the re reasoning? What was the tools I, I, I need to get to that result? So the Jedi is basically teaching the students those skills so that they can do research. But it's not only about doing research. It's also a skill, okay, that will allow them, okay, to survive, okay, for life. For example, project management. We had a Jedi. The first one was in 2011, and the first three guys that you see here, they are now in South Africa doing a master's in astronomy and astronomy-related field. And since 2011 and now, we have got six students who are now embarked onto such program in South Africa. And uh, this is a picture okay, we took uh, on Thursday. So we had another Jedi okay, this year. We came, we started working. And then we had a cyclone. And then like, Bruce was telling me, okay, like, what do we do? We got a cyclone. We still want to run the workshop. We move into something different, a virtual Jedi. We make use of SlideShare, all the tools that you have on the internet to, um, to exchange our presentation. And we use Facebook chat to discuss with the student. And then on Thursday, we went back to the university. There were still groups of students willing to work and learn more on that project. So, it's something that, okay, we can easily adapt, okay, to different fields. It's not only to science. The Jedi uh, is a philosophy, it's a way of teaching and learning, which can also be applied to engineering, economics, management. It is a very good peer-to-peer -peer training. And in 2013, we got 50 scientists from all around the world, from CERN from uh, Planck, from, uh, from the US, from UK, all around the world, they came to Mauritius, enjoying, okay, the Mauritian hospitality, okay? Nice beach, everybody wants to come down there. But we were 50 scientists sitting down and working on research problems. And at the same time, building collaboration between the Mauritian uh, researchers and the international community. Why we are doing that? Because Mauritius is part of that big project, the SKA. So we are going to benefit from that. We need people, engineers, scientists, mathematicians, and various parts so that we can analyze and come up, okay, because whenever we build a new instrument, we are going to detect lots and lots of new things. And any new things, new theories, anything coming out, obviously, imply at some stage, a Nobel Prize. We are not looking for one. We are thinking that the next Nobel Prize should all come from Africa, from Africans. So, I will summarize by putting that. 
That's a, that's a dual purpose. So right now we are building an instrument, the SKA, which is basically a key to open the box to understand what's up in the universe, to understand or try to know the secrets of the universe. And we version, we can benefit from that. We see, we have seen it, and we can also be part of, we are already part of that big 2 billion euro project, which is on the African soil, our neighbor. So, I will just say, shall we just like stand and look at that jewel box and say, Cezanne, ouvre-toi, or what do we do now? Thank you.